Welcome to our tutorial about relational databases. In this tutorial, we'll incorporate grid view and list view controls in conjunction with a relational database. I've already brought the database in from our previous tutorial, and here we only have one table currently. It stores our users. The first name, the last name, and email address are the columns of our table. Now we're going to create two more tables for this database. One table will store information about the newsletter we're going to be sending to our users. The next table will store information regarding how many newsletters have been sent to each user. Let's right click, add new table. The first field we'll call newsletter ID. It'll be of the integer data type, and we won't allow null values in this column. The second field will be newsletter name. Data type we'll set to varkar50. And again, we won't allow null data in this column. The newsletter ID will be our primary key. Identity specification. Let's select yes. We're done with this table. Let's save it. We'll call it newsletters and click OK. Now let's insert one more table, add new table. Here we'll store the number of letters sent and which letters were sent. Our first column will be called num of sends ID. We'll make it an integer and we won't allow nulls. It'll be the primary key for this table. We'll also set the identity specification to yes. The second field here will be the user ID. This will be the foreign key for the users table and also we won't allow null data in this column. Our next column will store the foreign key for the newsletter table. The data type will make it integer and null values will be prohibited. Let's add another column. This column is going to store the number of letters that we've sent. Let's call it num of sends. We'll make it an integer, and nulls will be prohibited as well. Okay, we are done with this table now. Let's enter a name and save it. We'll call it num of sends, and click OK. Now we need to create some relationships between these tables. Let's use a diagram to do that. Add new diagram. Let's add all three tables. Now I'm going to drop the user ID column from the number of sends table onto the users table. Click OK, and my relationship is created. Now, let's grab the newsletter ID, drop it here. Click OK to accept the relation, and OK again. Once again, to learn more about relational databases, please see our chapters on this topic earlier in this course. It's important that you get a handle on some of the basic concepts before you try to create your own relationships, etc. Let's close this. Yes. Click OK again. Yes here also. Now we need to add some data to our table. We've already got some data in the users table as you see here. Let's right click and open the newsletters table. Okay, let's add some data here. We're going to create three newsletters. One will be the e-mini tab. The next will be options trading. Tab. And our third one will be Forex. Let's tab again to register. And we're done with this table. 
Now let's enter some data in the number of sends table. Let's show table data. User ID, 1. Newsletter ID, 1. And number of sends, let's say 5. User 1. Newsletter ID 2. Number of sends, let's say 7. Again, user 1. Letter 3. And number of sends, 6. Now we'll move on to user 2. Letter 1. Number of sends, 3. User 2. Letter number 2. Number of sends, 9. User 2. Newsletter number 3. And the number of sends, 4. Let's add one more user, user 3. The letter 1 and the number of sends, 2. User 3, letter 2, and number of sends, 7. Again, with user 3, we'll send him newsletter 3 five times. Tab to register. You see that the first three users received all three letters. The last column shows how many letters were sent to each user. User number 1 received 5 issues of the e-mini newsletter. The same user received 7 issues of options trading and 6 issues of Forex. Okay, at this point we are done with entering our data and the database, so let's move on. Let's expand the toolbox. We need to bring in the grid view control. Choose data source, that's our first step. Let's select database. OK. Connection string. From our previous tutorials. If we built a database from scratch, we'd see a database name here instead of the string. OK. Let's get our users table first. We need all four columns. And click Next. Let's test query to see how it looks. Looks fine. Finish. OK, now let's select Edit Columns. We don't need to display the user ID. That's just for the database to identify the record. Let's expand the command branch and choose Select. We'll move it to the first position and click OK. As you see here, Enable Selection is checked. This will actually do the same thing. Let's select Auto Format, choose Black and Blue 1, and click OK. Let's resize it a little bit. Now let's use another grid view control. From the Choose Data Source drop down menu, I'll choose New Data Source. Select Database. OK. Connection String. Next, here I'll opt to specify a custom SQL statement or stored procedure. Next. Now let's use the Query Builder. From here we need to select the Newsletter table and the Number of Sends table. Add and Close. Let's make this window a little bit bigger. Now let's select Newsletter Name, Number of Sends ID, and Number of Sends. From here I'm also going to select let me just drag this out a bit. Number of sends user ID. We're not going to display it, but we're going to filter by the user ID. Based on the user ID, we're going to pull our newsletter names and the number of times this letter has been issued to a particular user. OK, let's click Execute Query. The user ID, let's enter user1 and click OK. Here we have our results. A mini was sent to user1 five times, options trading seven times, and Forex was sent six times. Let's click Execute Query again. 
Let's enter user number 4. I know nothing's been sent to this user yet. As a result, nothing is returned back to us. Let's click OK now. Click Next. Now let's select a parameter source from where we'll get our user ID. We're going to choose Control. The Control ID will be Grid View 1. Next. Here we can test our query. Let's enter 2 for the user ID and click OK. Everything seems to be fine. Let's click Finish. Now let's go to Auto Format, Black and Blue 1, OK, and we'll resize it a bit. Now let's check what we've done so far. And here's our display of Grid View 1. I see Grid View 2. Grid View 2 shows the newsletter name and the number of sends. I'm going to be deleting the third column, Number of Sends ID. Let's resize our browser a little bit. And let's get back to Visual Studio. OK. Select Edit Columns. Let's make the same modifications we made with Grid View 1. Remove the number of sends ID, and we'll add a command field. Let's move it up. OK. And OK. Now let's drag in a Details View control. Choose the data source. New data source. OK. Connection string. Specify a custom SQL statement or stored procedure and click Next. Query Builder. Add Newsletter and the Number of Sends table. And click Add. Close. Let's resize this a little bit. Here I'm going to select the newsletter name and the Number of Sends. Under the Column section, we'll filter by the Number of Sends ID. Let's filter here. And let's click outside to register and run the query. Number of Sends. Enter a value of 1 and click OK. And looks OK, so let's click OK. And Next. Now where should we get the number of sends ID from? Control, Control ID, Grid View 2, Next. Let's test our query. Enter 2, OK. Looks fine, let's finish. And let's go to Auto Format now. Choose Black and Blue 1. Click OK. And let's test it out now. Here's Grid View 1. Let's click Select. Bob Smith receives eMini, Options Trading, and Forex. Let's select eMini. And we have the Details view of the eMini now. We also know that the last two records are empty. When I click, nothing will appear here. Now if some of this was difficult to follow at this point, don't worry about it just now. Keep on watching the subsequent tutorials, and soon the pieces are going to start falling into place. And this concludes our tutorial about relational databases.